Good morning, all. This morning, I'd like to introduce you to the notion of therapeutic objectivity as practiced by psychotherapists and psychologists. So, for example, let's say that as a psychotherapist, you're sitting with your client and you're feeling uh, you judge or demeaned or belittled. Well, there could be uh, a number of techniques that you employ and one of them I am going to recommend the other I would say resist uh, there may be a tendency to want to take the work into interpersonal work in which you use nonviolent communication to communicate with your client that you're feeling demeaned and judged and that uh, how that makes you feel and what you'd prefer that your client do in order to address that I'm saying resist that. I'm saying that you can be grounded in further objectivity. So having a being triggered emotionally and uh, ha taking it to, into the interpersonal realm is reflective of being uh, subjective. Being a subject, being an offended subject, and then wanting to take it into the interpersonal realm. But you can be more objective than that. You can employ inter subjective psychology or the practice of intersubjective psychology in relationship with this client. So there are a couple of qualifications that are needed in order to be a sound intersubjective psychologist. The first of which is that you have done a lot of meditating or some other practice in order to become more or less free and clear of your own ego. You want You've want, going to have wanted to complete uh, a course of psychoanalysis or basically anything that you can do, uh, process your emotions such that you're no longer feeling really triggered in relationship to other human beings. The other uh, necessary qualification for intersubjective psychologists is that you're empathic, is that you have empathic relationships with your clients. That having been said, you're ready to practice intersubjective psychology. And the way that is done is that what you do is you note the feelings that are being elicited in your body by your clients. And then you rationalize that as being indicative of internal object relationships that your client has subconsciously and unconsciously in that very moment. And that they are looking through the lens of. They are looking at you through the lens of their internal object relation. So, in this case example of feeling demeaned or belittled, you can point out, well, you know, I notice that I'm feeling a little demeaned and belittled right now. I'm wondering if that's something that you frequently feel yourself or if that's something that you feel that you frequently make others feel. If you get a confirmation, then it's time to do the internal object work. So that client in that moment and probably in a variety of other moments in their life have an internalized object relation which is such that there is a demeaning or belittling other relating to an internalized object self that is probably younger than the individual who is sitting in your room. Probably a younger self. And uh, the work is such that you develop, you, you coach and guide this younger self to develop a pr an appropriate right relationship with this demeaning and devaluing internal object other. That could involve battle. It could involve any number of things. But have faith that in time, over the course of the internal object relationship work, a right relationship will be formed. But uh, most key to this video is that you aren't reacting towards your clients as a subject. You aren't being triggered emotionally and driven to take the work into interpersonal work. You're instead fairly objective in relationship to your clients. And you're seeing how they're making you feel and the, the feelings that they're eliciting in you is reflective of something that's going on deep inside of them. I hope that helps everybody, and I hope you're doing really well.
Peace be with you. Bye for now. Later.